Welcome back to the Rhonda Swan Show. Well, this week, I've got two very special women. In fact, they're representing millennials today. Their journeys are rather similar, but they've taken their own path. And today's show is about you tapping into how you came into this world and where you are now and where you could become. Because these two women have actually explored all of the different realms and now they're living their soul's purpose and they're showing others how to do it. So it's been this wild and crazy series. We're kind of starting to narrow it down because of course the Women Gone Wild Summit is coming up at the end of September 28th through the 1st where we are showcasing 44 different speakers and women that have completely gone wild. We've got celebrities, we've got musicians, but the basis of what we're doing is to raise the consciousness and the frequency of other women. Invite them to come be wild with us so that they can shift their way of thinking and maybe move into a more soul and a passion driven, purposeful life. So that's what we're up to. And this is now the time for us to introduce my guests this week, because I'm really excited to, um, to have you meet them. I was quite inspired. In fact, I was, you know, thinking about my daughter's 14 and I'm like, gosh, these women, they're the millennials, you know, they're in their thirties, but it's like, wow, you know, I'm aging myself. I'm like, gosh, that millennial group really had it. Like they knew they, they came into this world. Their parents were kind of pushing on to them what they should do. And then they were like, no, 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 we already know what we should do. And they broke out and really truly started to follow their soul's passion. And so my first guest, I'd love to introduce you to her, is Ania Halama. She's a world traveler who has helped thousands of heart-centered entrepreneurs gain and align their ideal clients and attract money, wealth, perfect health, perfect love, mental health, and spiritual wealth. Anya is a millennial manifester, intuitive digital artist, and spiritual life and business mentor. She's also an intuitive healer, and she's a certified Reiki master, angel healer, EFT certified coach, certified Haponopono. I know now it's always a hard Haponopono, right? I know it's from Hawaii. We've done that beautiful meditation. That's, I love it, uh, but I never get the, the word right. Uh, but she's also an angel card intuitive and law of attractive attraction master. Anya, goodness woman, get on out here. This is so inspiring. I love it. Tell me what's happening in your world right now. Where are you actually? Thank you. Thank you so much. I am actually in my hometown right now in Chicago. However, I do go to Mexico tomorrow night. So I am <laughs> constantly traveling. I'm constantly all over the world. I've traveled to close to 70 countries already, lived in 10 countries. Like I am here to stir some crap up. No more living in a gray box and no more like living in a cubicle, staring at blank walls. Like talk about women gone wild. Yes, that is <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> I love it, girl. Wow. So where are you going to Mexico tomorrow? Where is it? In Puerto Vallarta. I'm, I'll be there to, kind of on vacation. It's a working vacation for a little bit. And then I'm speaking at a retreat over there as well. Oh, wow. I love it. Um, you know, like when we lived in San Diego, you know, like just being able to go like to Mexico and, and it was like, it feels like you're in a complete, obviously you're in a di different country, but you, it's like, it really feels like you're actually at home. You know, like I really, because we lived in San Diego, we would go to Baja. And then when I was in Michigan, I lived in Michigan. We went to Cancun, Puerto Vallarta. Like it was like the thing that you did from the Midwest and you're from Chicago, right? So of course my husband's from Chicago as well. Uh, so we got this Midwest values hanging out here. Um, so let me talk to you sister about what you're doing now. Like, how did you get this calling? to actually tap more deeply into not in your spiritual self, but really guide others into finding theirs. Yeah, definitely. So um, about five years ago, I was working in corporate America for about 10, 15 years. And I just came to a point where I could either look for another job or do something completely crazy. And women got wild. I did something completely crazy. So I bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. I packed up my stuff. I sold my car, put everything in storage, bought a one-way ticket to Thailand and just went. 
I didn't know anyone. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know the language. I didn't even know what language they spoke in Thailand. I just went for it by myself. It was almost my first solo trip. And at that time, I didn't realize that I was going to find myself, but that's exactly what happened. By that time, I was, I had a lot of health issues. I had terrible digestive issues. I had insomnia. I had anxiety. I had all of these terrible issues with myself. And living abroad was a lot more inexpensive than living in America. So I had a lot more freedom with my money. I was going to yoga classes more often. I was eating healthier. I was meditating more often. And that's when my spiritual journey just started. Then I was traveling. I started getting more into my spiritual journey and I met a partner Um, And he was already on a spiritual journey for a long time. He never forced me to do anything and meditate with him, but him doing it consistently, like allowed me to do it consistently as well. And that's when my spiritual journey just completely exploded. Then I started dabbling in plant medicines. I started meditating more, doing all of these different techniques to seeing what works for me and what I enjoy doing at that point. Um, And and then last year, COVID happened and the world blew up and I had nothing else to do but to meditate seven times a day. (laughs) And that's when, like, I was already teaching spiritual um, stuff, like spiritual, like EFT tapping, meditations. I was teaching it already and I was doing business coaching at that point as well, but I just didn't know, like, what my true calling was. I wasn't sure how I was going to start a business around it, how I was going to really um, make the impact that I'm here to make. I had no idea how I was going to do that. So I started meditating seven times a day because I was a crazy person and I had nothing else to do. I was locked down for an entire year. So might as well be productive. I'm one of those people that I'd rather stay productive than be sleeping all day or playing video games or doing whatever. So while I was meditating for about a month straight, um, I kept hearing the message, right, right. Right. And I'm like, spirit, what do you want me to write? I'll write a couple blog posts. Like I'm not a writer. I'm, I'll write a blog post. I'll write some social media posts. I don't know. I'll do something. And I kept getting the message right. And then one day I heard write a book. I was like, okay, this is way outside of my comfort zone. I'm not a writer. I had a travel blog. I quit it because I hated writing. I just don't know what I want to do. Um, then I was on a massage chair one day and the name of the book came to me, Rebel's Guide to Spirituality. And at that moment, I just, I knew what to do. Like I, it just clicked in me. Spirit gave me the entire download that this is what you're doing. This is your message. This is your women gone wild, essentially rebels guide to spirituality. (laughs) Close enough. Um, And I just knew what to do. I knew that this was going to be my mission. Like I'm here to share my story through everything I've been through, through all of my, my spiritual journey, all of my healings, me traveling, quitting corporate America. Like I'm here to make that impression on someone else's life and hopefully inspire so many beautiful people while at it as well. And one thing led to another. Now I run beautiful, um, I call it the rebel entrepreneur retreat where I touch spiritual spirituality as well as business together. Um, I run a five day retreat. I have an incubator. I do when I'm on coaching. I just, I love making the impact in so many people's lives and like living my life to my fullest, like still traveling, doing me. And that is being inspiring to people. That's what I just, I love doing that. (laughs) Wow, girl, you are so, I like, I love your energy certainly because that is like that spark of wildness, but I really truly feel like you are living your soul's purpose. And I, I'm sure like there's so many that, are, you know, could be watching or that are like maybe in your similar state where they're like, gosh, how do I get that calling? Like, how do I find that calling? Right. And so you found it through deep into meditation and starting to tap in. Do you think like before you were ignoring it or numbing yourself out from actually feeling that that spirit calling and it was always there? You were just ignoring it. Like, how do you think that you opened up that vessel to allow that message to come through. 100% like I teach nowadays like your soul soul calling you always have it like you were born with your soul calling like the universe keeps giving you all these little hints of what you should be doing but it's up to you to figure it out and put it all together piece it together to find out what that what that big soul calling is so for me like I joke around it because when I was younger like I have a big ass smile like I'm always smiling I'm always energetic and that's just part of me 
me. So I've all, whenever I was younger, I was always saying like, oh, I wish I could make a living just being happy and spreading positivity. And I was like, coaching wasn't a thing when I was, when I was doing that. My parents were like, go be a doctor, go be something else. I was like, I just want to make people happy for a living and smile for a living. They're like, you're crazy. You're crazy. So I've always had that. And this is literally what I do for a living now, spread positivity, spread love, and just make a living off of my smile, essentially. <laughs> Oh my gosh, girl. I love it. You sound like my daughter, actually. She's like, everything is just about being happy. She's like, all I want to do, I'll just keep doing and leading my life through things that just make me happy. And if it doesn't make me happy, I'm not going to do it. I'm like, Hanale, you've got it more figured out than most in this whole wide world. All right. So tell me about this. Like if we can reach for the frequency of happiness and love, your life is complete. Complete. Exactly. I mean, what is, what is happiness and love frequent, uh, uh, vibrate at? Is it like a four or 500, you know, on the, uh, I've been actually reading right now, uh, David Hawkins book, uh, false truth. Well, no, this one's truth versus falsehood. So I've read the other ones, but he talks about that, you know, our consciousness scale, right. And our frequency scale. And most of the population, like 90, 85%, are under a 200 frequency level, which is fear, pride, right? And and just above like 200, that's just courage, right? And so we can continue to elevate our frequency just like what opens up, like the garbage falls away. Everyone's like, oh, this person, this, this, it's like, no, get out of that frequency level of talking about these things. And get, they don't actually matter because it, ta- it brings down your frequency. And I, I can feel your energy, girl. I'm just like, yeah. Like I'm floating with you. I love it. So all right, I want to know about this rebel's guide to spirituality. Is that what it is? Right? Yes. Isn't rebel's this? guide to spirituality. Tell me. Finding yourself as a lost 20 year old. What does it mean to heal your body inside, outside, all of it? Yes, that is my best selling book. And I am so grateful for spirit to lead me to it. I never imagined writing a book. Like I said, I I never thought that I was a writer. I quit a a travel blog because I was like, I hate writing. This is not for me. But um, it's my entire journey. It's my healings. It's my modalities that I teach. There's meditations in there. There's tappings in there. I go very deep into my story of how how I was raised, the different traumas that I went through, because every single one of us has traumas. I try to make this book as relatable to people as possible. Anyone that picks up this book, no matter how old you are, no matter what race, what gender you are, you will relate to something in this story. I talk about my anxiety, my depressions, my my addictions in their different um, different just traumas that I've been through throughout my life. And how I became the person that I am today, because I was, uh, yes, I was always happy, but I masked happiness with anxiety. I call it happy anxious in the book. There's a whole chapter about it. Um, And I just masked it. And I became this beautiful version of myself with all of these different modalities, with all of these different healing techniques that I do. Um, And I want to share that with other people, because no matter how dark your day is, there's brightness there as well. And you just need to tap into that brightness, tap into that gratitude, into that happiness, into that joy frequency, and your life will completely explode. And I want to be that light for someone else that no matter if someone's like on the floor, crying, depressed, with pills in their hand about to take their life, pick up my book. And that will be your shining light to get you to that next step and get you out of that darkness. Wow, sister, I feel it. Wow, that's amazing. We'll make sure that everyone knows how to get that book. Because I know that, you know, anyone, and it doesn't matter what age or gender or where they come from, get, just deserves to feel that frequency. All right, so before I let you go, because I feel like I am like on your wild journey, I cannot wait for you to speak on this summit. Like you are going to blast, you know, this live stream out completely. Um, and I, I really feel your mission. However, I'd love to know, like if you were to sell Give your small self, your younger self, Anya's younger self, five, six, seven years old, you know, like what you know now, what would you tell her was your best advice? Oh my goodness. I think it would be, you can be literally anything 
everything. Be, do whatever you want. Do not let anyone else stop you. I had so many naysayers in my life, my mom, my dad, my family, my friends. They thought I was completely crazy when I sold everything about a one-way ticket. They're like, what if you die? What if you do something? I'm like, what if I, what if I learn a new language? What if I fall in love? What if I become happy? What if I have fun? What if I see the world? Like you can't be thinking and allowing all these naysayers and negative people, like allowing this negativity to take over you like you can do and be whatever you put your mind to like you are allowed to create your own story and that story is going to be beautiful once you take that step and act for yourself i love it all right where can they find you girl because this woman's on fire You can find me on my website, anyahalama.com, on Facebook, Anya Halama, as well as Instagram at Anya Travels. Most of my um, most of my social media handles are Anya Travels. I love it. All right, girl, I can't wait to see you at the end of the month. Learn more deeply about what you do and how others can really just tap into that happiness Thank frequency. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Good to see you, darling. All right, so now we've got our next guest. Like these two women, it's like, wow, what they do and who they are, it's like it oozes through. And this is why, I mean, I says I know why this calling of to do this and bring these women together, because every time I interview them, I my life changes. I get energized. I learn something. I It changes who I am inside. So my next guest, I cannot wait to bring her out. Her name is Erin Mortensen. She's a seven-figure business coach who revolutionized the virtual assistant and service provider industry. As someone who truly came from the bottom with substance abuse and eating disorder that almost killed her and disassociative anxiety as the result of PSD, Erin knows how difficult it can be to see a bright future. She's here to show others that no matter what they're going through, they can come out the other side with the life that they love. She now empowers people from all over walks of life to start living the lives they want by taking the skills they already have and start working online. Erin, come and share with us this inspiration of where you've come from, woman. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm so excited to have you and you know joining all these other women coming together but today's a really special one because i wanted just to kind of tap into you more personally so our audience and those getting ready to watch us are like wow i cannot wait to meet them (laughs) so (laughs) let's hear about this wild story girl where did you come from like how did all this stuff happen right how did you come through the other side yeah you know um so in my in my teens and early twenties, I struggled a lot with an eating disorder and with alcohol abuse. Um, I come from a really small town. So for us, there really wasn't anything to do other than party. And so growing up, you know, I was just always drinking a lot. I was always getting really, um, drunk at parties. And, you know, when I went away to college, my freshman year, I completely lost it. I failed out of school. Um, I was in a relationship that ended horribly and I just totally spiraled into a really dark place. And, Um, you know, between my eating disorder and my alcohol abuse, I was really in a place where I did not see a very bright future. I kind of knew while I was doing all these things, I was slowly killing myself, to be honest with you. And I was kind of okay with it. Um, It wasn't until, you know, I ended up in rehab. I was kind of in and out of rehab for a year for both my eating disorder and for alcohol that I started to kind of see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, And there was a moment where I'd actually relapsed. And um, after getting sober for the first time and I had been living with a boyfriend and, you know, after my relapse, he decided, you know, I can't do this right now. He packed up all my life's belongings into my two door Honda, um, parked them in the middle of the rehab parking lot. And I woke up one day, I came to from, you know, my relapse, saw my life's belongings in the middle of a rehab parking lot. And I was like, I don't think this is what was planned for me. (laughs) I don't think that this is supposed to be my path. Um, And that was really like my moment of clarity where I just saw my life sitting in a parking lot. And I was like, I think there's more to this than this. And so I really worked hard. I got sober. I, you know, um, went to recovery from my eating disorder. I'm celebrating 10 years sobriety this year, um, as well as from the eating disorder, which is super incredible. I never would have thought that would have been, you know, myself back in the day. Um, And then what happened from there was, you know, I sort of, from there, I, I I was really proud of my journey. I I went to college, I graduated, I got good jobs, I was climbing the corporate ladder, but I was still just not 
fully convinced that this was it. I was still kind of like, did I really go through all that just to, uh, you know, sit in a cubicle and stare at a parking lot all day and have what I like to call fluorescent light syndrome, where I just felt like that's all my life was, was these fluorescent lights. Right. Um, and so there was a time where I went on a vacation to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> there, see, look at this. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> a magical place. I went to Tulum with my boyfriend. It was the first time we had gone on vacation together. First time I had traveled in a long time. And when I came back from the vacation, it wasn't like I was happy because I got to go away on vacation. It was like, I became super depressed because I realized this isn't my life. You know, ah, like yeah. I only get to live like that what, two weeks out of the year, two weeks paid, paid time off. Like that can't be right. Um, and so I started spending a lot of time trying to research, you know, how to work online, how to work from home, how to make money online, all the things I was constantly, constantly searching for something else. Um, my friends were kind of always making fun of me, you know, like joining all these MLMs and trying all these things and trying everything I possibly could try to figure it out. Um, and then one year, you know, later that year, actually, I was in a really horrific accident where I almost died and yeah, it was a really bad accident. And, um, I developed PTSD and which led to dissociative anxiety, depersonalization. And I had another one of those moments of like, okay, I am trying really hard to heal myself. And I just can't because I'm in this job that doesn't let me sleep in when I need to, and doesn't let me take a day off when I'm having a really bad day with anxiety and doesn't even, you know, allow me to just exist as a human. Everything is really high demand, high stress, toxic workplace, all the things. Um, and so I decided to start working as a virtual assistant. I said, you know what, I've done this before in a previous life. I had sort of moonlit as a virtual assistant for realtors. Uh, I said, let me try this again. Uh, the week that I launched my business, I got fired. <laughs> wow. So, Perfect. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I launched on Monday, got fired on a Friday. And <laughs> quite honestly, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because that really um, lit the fire underneath me that I needed to go all in. Um, so when that happened, I quickly grew my virtual assistant business. I started making really good money. Um, but I realized like all these people who are starting as virtual assistants were being taught to work for really, really, really cheap. And I was someone who came from a near six figure salary in the corporate world. I wanted to make more money than really, really, really cheap. Right. So I started teaching other people how to make good money as virtual assistants and other types of service providers. And in doing so, I pretty much re you know, invigorated or ever revolutionized the whole industry by teaching people, Hey, you can, you can actually take the skills you already have working in the corporate world or your passions or whatever it is. And you can make a six figure salary working online. You can make 10 K months. You can actually do all these things just by helping other people run their businesses. Um, and then since then, you know, I'll, I've helped over 5,000 people at this point, uh, get started between my multiple offers, which I think is super wow. incredible. So yeah, that's how, that's how we wound up here. <laughs> Check you out. I love it. Wow. That's like, if that's not wild, I don't know what is, <laughs> I mean, but it's also too, I like, thank you for, for sharing your, like your true depth of, of your story. And I think, you know, so many, they see the light and they're like, oh, she can do it, but I couldn't do that because I'm not like that. But you've actually really gone through it in these moments of some of the hardest times. And I think that's even more inspiring than where you're at now is that you actually overcame these moments of darkness that brought you through into the light. And, um, you know, do you, uh, do you talk about this story as well? Like that helps inspire people to come forward because, you know, like you're sharing it today, but I feel like the, those even that you work with, like there's so much more is there so much more like, I don't want to say respect, but it's like vulnerability has so much strength. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and I, I talk a lot about, um, the anxiety component of it because so many of the people who I work with, um, they have a really big fear of showing up online and of having a social media presence and of putting themselves out there. And, you know, for me, I am not the type of person who, uh, was really bubbly and energy, high energy and showing up in stories. And when I was always really anxious. And I'm, I'm like an introverted extrovert, right? Like I'm outgoing. I'm have a lot of friends. Like I can make friends with, uh, you know, a pillow, but like for me, it's also kind of, I, I care a lot about what people think about me. I cared when I was starting my business, I cared what kids from high school might say, even though I had graduated 10 years earlier. Um, I cared a lot about those things. And so for me, you know, I know that a lot of people are also experiencing that. I want to start a business, but I'm afraid of showing up online. I want to start, but I'm afraid of failing. I want to start, but I have anxiety or I have health problems or I have this, this, and that. And I'm like, 
I got them all. <laughs> I did them all too. I have them all too. You know, I've lived through it all and, and I made it out on the other side, you know? So, um, that's one of the things that I'm most passionate about is talking about my mental health struggles and whatnot, because I want people to know, like, listen, if I can be stuck in a rehab parking lot, looking at my life in front of me and then come out, a, you know, 10 years later with a seven figure business, you absolutely can too. Yeah, girl. I love it. You know, it's such a big deal. So let's talk about then the work that you do, because like we were on a call yesterday with all the, the speakers just kind of prepping and getting to know each other. And I was like, I think I know uh, 40 people that are sitting on this call right now that want your help. So let's talk about what you do on the virtual assistant world, um, you know, and, and, and who you work with and who you help. Because, yeah. um, you know, I think that every woman that's watching is like, wow, yeah, I could definitely use some help. And I want people Everyone. to choose from the right people, you know? Everyone needs, everyone needs a virtual assistant. Everyone needs uh, help growing their businesses, right? You, you can't do it all on your own. Um, well, you know what they say, do what you do best, delegate the rest. It's honestly the best, the best way to grow your business. Um, so what I do is I help people who have either just started and haven't really grown their businesses yet, or are where I was stuck in the nine to five, stuck in the cubicle, wanting to figure out how the heck do I make money online, uh, start their business as a virtual assistant or other service provider. So think, you know, social media manager, copywriter, um, online business manager, you know, sort of that sort of line. Um, so I teach them everything they need to do to launch their businesses. So here's the legalities of it. Here's how you get started. Here's how you figure out your zone of genius. Here's how you, you know, approach potential clients, market yourself, get online mindset behind a lot of it. You know, as I was listening to Anya speak, I'm like, yeah, a, a lot of this is so, so needed, you know, because even for me, like I, I help, I manifested so much of my business in the first year, um, where I would just write everything down that I, that I wanted to happen and I would make it happen. And that's some of the things that I teach my clients as well. Um, so we go through everything you could possibly need to start your business. And, um, and one of the most important slash, you know, things that I'm most proud of within my, my business and my program is, uh, the aspect of community, you know, uh, it really does take a village. And I know that especially when you're starting an entrepreneurial journey, it can be really isolating because you have people like family and friends who just don't get it. It's not that they don't believe in you, but they just don't understand what it is you're doing. So when you have that sort of feeding into this negative mindset that you might already have about starting this journey, that can really take its toll. And so I love the power of community within my, my community <laughs> because uh, it really does help, you know, creating those, those relationships and helping to facilitate that within my program is just something that's been so incredible for me as someone who struggled to find friends after high school, because I failed out of college, I ended up graduating a little bit older than my classmates. Um, I really couldn't make friends in my twenties. It was really difficult for me. So now having be now being in the position that I'm in, I love facilitating these friendships and making these people come together and like having people in their twenties and thirties and forties, whatever age, make new friends online has been one of the most rewarding parts for me. Oh my goodness. I love it. Well, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of pings, so we probably should make sure people know how to find you. But before we do that, um, I, I want to ask the same question I asked Anya, because both of you are so similar. I love that you're both millennials. Like you're so representative of that millennial spirit. Right. And you know, I'm, I don't know, Gen Y or something, 48, you guys are like in your 30, 31. So like, that's not very far away, but it's just like so many people go, oh, that's such a big gap because I remember exactly where you are. And I was like, I was so late, you know, this energy, I feel like I still have it, but it's like, it's knowing who we are right now and being able to share our best advice, like where we are now in the wisdom that we have now, because you're going to have different advice when you're 48. Like I would have told myself probably something different at 31. So what is that best advice that you'd give yourself? Because where you are now to where you were, there was a lot in between that, 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 that Aaron had to go through. Yeah. What would you say yeah, absolutely. Like you know, I think truthfully, my advice to myself would really be to hang in there because I think that I needed to go through what I went through to be the person that I am today. I think I would have told myself, Hey, I know what you're going through is really difficult right now, but just trust that one day you are going to use this to help other people. And I think that in that moment, that probably would have given me a little bit of hope, but I really do think that I needed to go through the experiences that I went through in order to have, you know, the the life that I live today, because I don't know that if everything was peaches and cream, if I would have been able to do what I do now, you know, I think that I need to go through those struggles. 
I love that. I love that. I love what you do. I love who you are. I love where you've come from. And uh, I'm so excited to see you at the end of the month. Will you please make sure everyone knows how to find you and uh, so how they can yeah, tap into and just not only your services of how you can help them get there, but that I can assume that you probably have a massive Rolodex of actual VAs that are ready to help people, right? right. We, have, we have a whole matchmaking program that is, that is currently free. So if you are needing a VA, you gotta, you gotta reach out to us. Um, yeah, of course you can find me on Instagram at Aaron.mort, M O R T. Um, and my website is Aaronmort.com. Okay. Well, Aaron Mort, every, I'm sure all of a sudden all these followers are going to start. Right <laughs> I love uh, it. But what a beautiful way. Like I love those, especially entrepreneur stories that take an idea and then turn it into their, their own. Like you actually teach VAs how to take what they already know, become a VA first and then turn it into a business. Like this is really beautiful and yeah, uh, it's absolutely. so well needed, especially the way the world has shifted. And obviously we're all digital right now. So more and more of us are going to need more help from all of you amazing people. So thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you, Anya. Like, wow, thank both you. of you are just absolute full of spirit. I mean, this is what we need today. I mean, women today are the more and more we start coming together and just like really seeing each other, like seeing each other and giving each other the, that support and that flame and that energy, you know, that maybe one sister one day is feeling a little lower and you're like, come on girl, I got you. And then creating that sisterhood, you know, um, I didn't have that growing up. In fact, you know, in my time growing up, it was like, you know, the, the girls were always constantly blah, 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 all this, you know, fighting and bickering and, and just not really seeing each other. And I think today more than ever, I think you're in, I don't know, maybe your era, your generation got it a little bit better than all of ours, but we all go through our own same struggles, right? Because we're taught to, to judge. We're living in a society these days that are teaching us to, you know, look to try to be better than someone or to put them down or in a society that says we're not good enough. And we're here to tell you that you are good enough. You can do what you want. You can have it all. And you can do it because you find your calling. You tap into yourself and your depths of your spirit. Like this is the essence of what this Woman Gone Wild movement is. And so all of you that are watching, please make sure you go follow Anya and Aaron. But more importantly, join us. Join us. Come be wild with us. Rewild yourself or bring your rawness into the earth and come join us so that more and more women can feel it. In fact, we just wrote a manifesto that we want to share with you. You get to sign this and say, I am a woman that is courageous, that protects the water of her body and her earth and attracts truth, true wealth, trusting wealth, wealth with integrity. See, that's where this new feminine energy is taking a stand for today. And that's why we want you to join us on the Women Gone Wild Summit, 28th of September through the October 1st. So ladies, thank you so much for being here. Oh my goodness. I am so honored and so grateful for you. And uh, I cannot wait to see you at the end of the month. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you so yeah. much for having yeah. us. Yeah, my thank pleasure. You so thank much. you. Enjoy your journey to Mexico tomorrow, Anya. And uh, hopefully we'll see you somewhere around the world. But for those of you that have been watching at home, thank you for joining us in this Women Gone Wild series, tapping into this feminine energy and rewilding yourself. So I want to invite you to make sure that you register right now for the Women Gone Wild Summit. You'll get direct access to that manifesto of women coming together and signing their their like stamp that said, I am a woman that's going wild and I want to support other women doing the same. So thanks for being here, everyone. We'll see you on the next show. Don't forget to be unstoppable and stay wild. Bye, everyone.